You can have perfect exposure, perfect white balance, but if your skin tones look off, your whole image is going to look wrong. So by the end of this, you'll be able to normalize your skin tones, refine your contrast with perhaps a little bit more precision, manage your saturation selectively, uh, and keep your shots consistent across multiple angles. Uh, these are all referred to as secondary corrections. We've spoken about primary corrections already. Now we're moving on to secondary corrections. And they take place after you've performed those primary corrections. So normalizing skin tones, refining contrast curves, targeting saturation precisely, and then matching shots across multiple angles. Okay, <clears throat> so let's start with skin tones because they're probably the most important part of any correction. You're going to pull up your vector scope, you're going to look for that skin tone line. That's that line sitting at around about 10 o'clock there. And no matter the ethnicity of your subject, healthy skin should fall somewhere along that line. So if your trace is off to the side, maybe it's leaning a little bit green or a little bit magenta, that's a cast that you essentially are going to need to fix. You're going to use the hue versus sat or the hue versus hue curves to nudge those skin tones back to where they belong, okay? And if the background colors get in the way, you can also use a qualifier to isolate just the skin, perhaps a power window as well. And that way you don't mess up the rest of the image while fixing your subject's skin tones. <clears throat> Next up is contrast. You've already worked with lift, gamma, and gain in the previous tutorial, but here's where curves can come into the picture. Curves give you much finer control you know, you can add a gentle S-curve to deepen your shadows and brighten your highlights while protecting your midtones. Or you can add midtone contrast specifically, which creates a little bit of depth in faces without crushing your, your shadows. Always protect the highlights and the shadows. This is something that's really important to remember. Because once they clip, you know, once you push it above the, the highlights above that top line or the shadows below the bottom line, once they clip, that detail is gone. So you've got to think of contrast as sculpting the image. Subtle moves go a long way in my view. Now, saturation management, this is where things can really fall apart if you're not careful. You've got global saturation, but you can also use really targeted tools. So you can use hue versus sat to reduce saturation in colors that are maybe a little bit too loud. You know, maybe, maybe you've got a, a neon sign that you need to reduce a little bit while leaving everything else alone. Um, you can protect those neutrals, those whites and grays and, and the skin as well, um, because those should stay believable. You can also maybe go in and boost the sky, boost the color in the sky, or, or for certain objects, you can boost the color selectively to draw attention to, you know, that object. But you always have to keep an eye on your vector scope, because if the trace is moving more towards the edges, you know, slamming against those edges, you're clipping the gamut or the color range and you're losing detail. You're going to have to reel it back in. So this is something we're going to look at as well when we kind of go through this uh, in Resolve in a little bit. So yeah, we're going to put this into practice now. First, normalizing skin tones across two different angles. We're going to use the vector scope and the curves to keep them consistent. Then we're going to use the curves to add depth with midtone contrast. We're going to be careful not to crush the shadows. And then finally, we're going to try a targeted saturation adjustment. And once everything looks natural and we're happy, then you're going to move on to the next thing, which we're going to cover in the next tutorial, which is shot matching. Okay, so I've got a sequence here. We're going to take a look at a few shots uh, in the sequence potentially. And then I've got an extra shot at the end here that I also want to use for this demonstration as well. For this first shot, I'm going to need to create those four nodes for my primaries color corrections. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I've created those nodes and I've done those primaries color corrections on this clip. And now uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to normalize skin tones. Okay, so I'm going to create a new node here. I'm going to just label it skin. And that's the node we're going to work in to normalize our skin tones. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to the vector scope. And I'm going to make sure that the skin tone indicator is on. So I'm going to go here to the settings. And I'm going to just turn on the skin tone indicator. And you know what I'm also going to do? I'm going to turn on this two times zoom. And what that does uh, is it kind of just extrapolates or makes the trace a little bit bigger just so it's easier to see. And yeah, just it, it'll just make it easier to see for the purposes of this demonstration. Okay, so now uh, what we need to do is we need to isolate the skin. And then we need to ensure that it is falling on the skin tone line, which is this one over here. So how you'll do that is you would go over here to the qualifier and you make sure that you're in the HSL qualifier for hue, saturation, and luminance. Uh, there's a number of different kinds of qualifiers here, but we're just going to use the first one, the HSL qualifier. And then what you do is you move over to your subject to their skin 
and you can click to select and you'll see inside the node here it started to make that selection uh, and in order to see what the selection is you need to turn on highlight mode which is this little button at the top here and as you can see it's kind of made that selection i'm just going to go outside of highlight mode i'm going to use the plus and the minus droppers here as well maybe just to add a little bit into this let me turn highlight mode back on maybe just click there just trying to grab a little bit more of this I don't really want to grab that beard or the hair so what i'm maybe going to do is grab the one with the minus on it just click there on the beard go back to this plus one click on the forehead and this seems to be getting to a point where it's cleanish i'm just selecting some of the other points that i need to and that now seems to be pretty close to what we need it to be you could also go in here to hue and saturation and refine it so you could open it up here under hue you could also kind of grab a little bit more saturation uh, which i don't think we need to do right now i'm going to also just grab this end here and maybe just slide it make it a little bit kind of a smoother or a feathered kind of transition for saturation uh, and you can also click and drag inside these to um, kind of move them around but i think we were in more or less the right place there and then the other thing you can do under matte finesse here is you can go in and uh, clean black and clean white uh, or, and that will kind of clean up your selection uh, i'm just going to kind of play around with these just to do a little bit of cleaning up uh, you can also maybe play around with denoise a little bit and I think that looks good for the purposes of this demonstration. Okay, so what we need to do now, you can see, because we're in highlight mode, if you look at the vector scope, you can see that uh, the trace is kind of just showing us that skin. And we can actually see that it's leaning a little bit too much towards kind of yellow. We need it to be a little bit more uh, kind of in between red and yellow on this line. And how you'll do that is the skin tones live somewhere within the midtones. So you're gonna go into the primaries color wheels here and you're gonna grab this little guy in the middle of the color wheel and a gamma, and we're gonna just start moving that over to where it needs to be. It's kind of, it's gonna push it away from the line and then bring it back. And it's not too much of a adjustment there, uh, but yeah, we've basically moved it back onto that skin tone line. And what I'm also gonna do is just bring the saturation down a bit and then kind of bring it back and let's leave it around about 46 let's turn highlight mode off and what you can see now is if we control d we turn that node on and off you can see that the skin tones were actually leaning a little bit yellow kind of green and that's the change we've kind of made we've made them a little bit more red and that's how you isolate skin tones Okay, so I want to actually just show you a few other things, and I'm going to use this clip at the end here, which is actually not part of the sequence, but I, I thought it was a good clip to use for this demonstration. I want to just show you a few other things, essentially, and thanks to James, R.A., and Layla, who are in my Audio and Video Production 3 class, for essentially letting me use this clip in the tutorial. I saw them in the edit suites yesterday and uh, I saw this clip and I thought, wow, this would be perfect essentially for this tutorial. So yeah, they they shared it with me and, and allowed me to use it, I guess. Okay, so as you can see, I've created these first four nodes for my primaries corrections, balance, exposure, contrast, and saturation, but I'm not actually gonna do anything just yet. I wanna bring up my RGB parade. And as you can see, this shot is very blue. I think it was purposely shot in this way, so I'm not really going to do a color balance um, or an exposure adjustment or anything right now. And I'm going to move back to the qualifier and move over to the skin, click, and, and let's turn highlight mode on. And I'm just going to grab the plus dropper and I'm just going to start kind of doing all of this. Um, and now what I'm going to do is just play around with hue, maybe a bit with saturation. The more I bring up the saturation, the more I'm going to grab that background. So I'm going to want to bring it back. Uh, and it's okay if it moves into her hair there as well. And then we can also kind of drag luminance around to see what that's doing. And maybe if we drag this up, we'll get rid of a bit of that hair, still hold on to the skin. And I think... We're pretty close now. So we can actually see if we look at the vector scope that the skin is leaning quite heavily blue. So what we can do now is we can go to the this little hockey puck under gamma and we can start to move the skin tones away and towards 
that skin tone line. We don't want to push them too far, but that's probably where they need to be more or less. I might just quickly grab that. Yeah, that looks like uh, they're in a good place. So let's turn highlight mode off and let's do a before and an after here. You can see we've made a really good adjustment of those skin tones for quite a difficult shot, I think. And what I'm also going to do is, let's just turn highlight mode back on. Uh, I think they're maybe just a touch too saturated, perhaps. Um, so I'm going to just dial it back, dial saturation back, and then just bring it up and kind of dial it to taste. We don't want them to pop too much. Yeah, that looks good. Around about 38. Maybe let's bring them up to about 40. That looks good. So we can do a, another before and after. You can see we've made a good adjustment of the skin tones there. Um, one other thing that you could do to maybe make her a little bit more prominent in the image is bring up the face. So we've made kind of a targeted adjustment here. Um, we could also bring this exposure wheel up a bit under lift and just bring her face up a touch when it comes to exposure, it's just control D. That looks a lot better. And uh, the other thing I'd probably do here, let's just turn highlight mode back on. And what I think I'm gonna do here is just play around with clean black and clean white, just to make this selection a little bit more clean. I'm also gonna play with the noise, which kind of just feathers the edges of the selection a bit as well. Let's play a little bit with that. Let's put that around 5.7 it is right now. Let's turn that off. And then I do one last before and after, and you can see we've made quite a significant change to the skin. It looks a lot more natural um, and a lot more pleasing. Before we move on with this image, I just wanna show you a couple of other ways to add contrast. I'm gonna go back to the image we were working on originally, this one here. I'm actually gonna right click on this node to reset that grade and get rid of the contrast. And now what I wanna do is uh, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways. So firstly, let's actually go under the curves here. Let's go to the custom curves and <clears throat> you can add something called an S curve to essentially just bring a bit of contrast into the image. It gives you a little bit more kind of fine tuned control. Mm -hmm. So you'll make a point right in the middle here and then about 25% of the way or half halfway between this point and that point, you'll make another one. And then halfway between this point and that point, you'll make another one. And then what you do is you'll drag this point up and this point down into a gentle, what is called an S curve. You can see there's kind of like an S shape there. And what that does is it just gives you kind of like a little bit more fine tuned control over the contrast. You can see that's a contrast adjustment. I'm gonna just reset that. Another way you can maybe add a little bit of contrast and I guess more into the midtones is you could bring up the contrast here under the primaries color wheels. And it's actually while we're doing this work, let's bring up the waveform. Um, and then if you want to push the contrast more kind of into the midtones, what you could do is you could move the pivot slider because that changes where essentially the contrast is, where that range is. And you could move it up towards somewhere between kind of 0.45 and 0.55. So I'm going to move it to about, let's leave it about there. And now what I'm going to do is just and you can see that's a, maybe a little bit more targeted towards the midtones. So those are a couple of new ways that you could potentially add contrast to your image as well. Okay, so let's go back to this last clip. I wanna show you something which is essentially called a targeted saturation adjustment. Um, so I'm going to add another node at the end here. Let's label it targeted. And essentially what we're gonna do here is I wanna bring the blue background down essentially either desaturate the color a little bit or maybe even change that color to a different color and maybe desaturate it a little bit as well and there's two different ways we could approach this so let's make sure we've selected that new node that we're going to work in you go under under curves and then you move over to we can first go to hue versus hue we're going to essentially try hue versus hue and hue versus set so let's go to let's actually go to the hue versus set curve first and then what you do is you move over to the image and you select that background or that color that you want to affect uh, with the dropper and you can see there is that color right there and what you now can do is if you drag this down you'll see that it's going to start to desaturate that color okay so we could desaturate that color we could then move back to our skin node maybe just bring her exposure up a touch again and now you can see we've actually we've brought her up a little bit now she's a little bit more prominent in the image i'm just going to reset this node grade as well 
Uh, I'm going to go to the hue versus hue curve. I'm going to move over to this background. I'm going to select it. And now you'll see it's made a point there. We can actually drag these away and that will give us a little bit kind of more room to work with. And now if we drag it down or up, it's going to change the color of that background. So we could make it a little bit less, kind of move it kind of towards green, a little bit more teal maybe, or move it towards kind of being a little bit more pink or purple. So you can, you, you essentially can see how you can do a bit of a targeted saturation adjustment, either changing that color or desaturating it. Okay, I just want to highlight again some common pitfalls, some common mistakes that you need to potentially avoid. Uh, letting skin tones drift off that line. Uh, you know, if it doesn't look human, you've gone too far, so you don't want the skin tones drifting off that line. You can also run into something called over-contrasting. Um, you're pushing the contrast too much and essentially then you're losing detail in shadows or highlights. Another one is forgetting to normalize color temperature across multiple angles. Nothing essentially kills continuity like mismatched shots and that's something uh, we will have a look at. Uh, and then, of course, oversaturating highlights or shadows, which makes your footage look a little bit artificial. So those are some common mistakes or common pitfalls to avoid as well. Okay, so I'm going to leave a free resource in the description below, uh, an advanced color correction cheat sheet, uh, if you will. Uh, you can find it in the description below. And if you feel like you learned something new about keeping skin tones natural in this video, you know, hit the like button, share this with your classmates or with your crew. Uh, because next up, we're going to deal with shot matching and consistency, you know, so your entire sequence or scene finally looks like one piece. Uh, you know, it's not five different cameras arguing. I'll see you in that video.